So, if you watched my roundup of 2015, then you won't be surprised to see this review pop up. Yes, as mentioned then, Ori and the Blind Forest is my favourite indie release of 2015, and it's one that will always have a special little place on my computer hard drive. I originally stumbled across this game being streamed on Twitch, only a few days after it released, and within 30 seconds I was on Steam buying it. It really was love at first sight for me, but I think what surprised me was the actual depth of the game once I started playing it. I mean, it's not at all rare to come across good looking games, and as you're watching the video I'm not even going to waste time explaining what makes Ori a good looking game. But let's face it, there's a lot of games that promise the world with the visuals, and then you play them and discover that the pretty graphics are just a smokescreen for broken and repetitious gameplay and a shallow plot. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Oh, I'm sorry, I think uh, something got stuck in my throat there. Anyway, what makes this game so special for me is that it promised the world and actually managed to deliver it. The storyline is a charming little tale that feels like it jumps straight out of a fairy tale book. You have an enchanted forest in danger and an orphaned tree spirit thrown onto a path of challenge and adventure. And when I say challenge, I mean challenge too. Don't let the cutesy graphics fool you because this is certainly not a game for children. For about the first 30 minutes the game will lull you into a full sense of security, but pretty soon it bears its teeth, and what teeth they are too. If you've ever played Super Meat Boy then you should find yourself suitably prepared. But if the only platform games you've played are Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog, then you're likely in for a world of hurt. But while Super Meat Boy was a challenge from start to finish, Ori has a little more ebb and flow to it, as the puzzle solving elements provide some very welcome breathers from chaining together epic athletic feats and destroying foes. You can also save just about anywhere, which helps ease the difficulty of the game by reducing repetition when you die, which trust me, you'll learn to love. Saving is done by soul linking, which creates a sort of spirit flame in which you'll respawn each time you die. It can also be used to access the ability tree, which you can use to enhance Ori's abilities, from offensive options, which increase the amount of damage dealt by Ori's flame attack, to being able to see through walls and regaining health each time you save. And this offers a great deal in terms of customization, as it allows you to enhance Ori in line with the way you like to play the game. If, for example, you enjoy exploration, the triple jump at the end of one of the trees will be perfect for you. If, however, you just want to lay waste to every enemy in your path, then there's a handy flame attack upgrade at the end of another tree. The climaxes of the game are a mix of rather traditional boss-style battles, with some athletic equivalents which force you to traverse particularly tricky sections of the game chased by certain death. Now, there's no saving in these sections either, they have to be completed all in one go. They aren't long sections, generally just lasting a couple of minutes from start to finish, but that assumes that you can complete it first time, when in practice it's sure to take numerous attempts. The section you're watching now is a prime example. It might look simple enough watching it, but timing is everything, and just one mistake leaves you straight back at the beginning. It took about 30 minutes and a lot of deaths for me to get this completed section all the way up, and when you're playing these sections it almost becomes like a dance as you gradually train yourself to execute certain moves at just the right moment. This particular section isn't even that far into the game, it's about halfway through at most, but it'll certainly feel challenging enough when you first get here. I'm not even exaggerating that by the time I completed this segment, even with it being my second time as I've already completed the game, my hands were dripping with sweat as in these sections there is just no let up. Saying that, the feeling of finally beating these sections is like no other and each one rewards you with a lovely little cutscene and story segment which does at least make all the pain feel worthwhile. What I find special about Ori, which is exceptionally rare in a game, is that it has a wonderful sense of flow from start to finish with the storyline, gameplay, environments and soundtrack all wonderfully incorporated, and I would even say orchestrated, with everything working in a near perfect unity, which leaves the game with an exquisite sense of cohesion. This game is a true labour of love, and it just makes me wish that all developers would treat their creations as such rather than just as the next money churner. This game for me is what the games industry is all about, pure art and entertainment. <laughs>